So one of the techniques I wanted to share that really changed the game for me in terms of not procrastinating is called Pomodoro Timing, and it's basically a really popular time management technique where you split your work into 25 minute intervals with short breaks in between. I found that a lot of the time when I'm staring at a big task like writing an entire essay, I don't even know where to start, so it's easy to turn to TikTok or Netflix just to get it off of my mind. But by breaking down a bigger task or goal into something I only have to do for the next 25 minutes, it's much easier to have something to focus on rather than just getting overwhelmed by the entire task. So for example, I'll tell myself I have to finish coming up with a thesis in the next 25 minutes. The website I use to tie myself is called pomofocus.io, but there's also a lot of other study videos on YouTube with Pomodoro timing. Okay, so now let's begin the 25 minutes. That's what meditation is. It's just stillness. So the first thing that comes with that stillness is turning this off. Okay, because this is where a lot of the noise and a lot of the anxiousness stems from. And then wherever I'm at in a room, I sit down, make sure my feet are planted firmly on the ground. I put my hands by my side, just like this flat. And I take a deep breath.
Zotto. Morning world. Oh my god, it's so cold outside. So today I'm going into London to go to some cafes because I feel like libraries have been feeling a bit too serious for me lately and I kind of wanted to switch it up. Um, but I feel like people tell me I'm crazy for going to London like every single week. But to me like a one to two hour commute isn't too bad because I used to commute one to two hours for high school. So it kind of feels normal to me. Okay, let's go. My second study tip is about how to actually understand all of the information that you're consuming. So while it's easy to find ways to test yourself in subjects like math or science, I find that it's usually not as intuitive to find ways to test yourself in the humanities. So a lot of the time I'll read an entire page, and at the end of the page I forget that I was even reading because I zoned out so much, or I'm just so focused on taking notes that I don't truly understand what the reading even means. So I started using a three column table with the reading on the left, the main argument or my own synthesis in the middle, and regular notes on the right. By writing these syntheses after each reading, where I basically put the reading into really basic terms, I'm able to test myself to see if I actually understand it. And a good way to think about it is if your friend asks you what you're reading, and you have to describe it to them in super basic terms. So for example, here I wrote, political parties exploit voters by shaping their preferences. Hashtag manipulating, hashtag gaslighting. So sometimes I get pretty creative with it, and honestly, I found that the more I try to quote unquote dumb it down, the more the information actually sticks with me. I also keep this phrase bank on the side of my screen whenever I'm writing an essay and start to feel stuck. I separated the phrases I commonly use by whether I'm agreeing with the author or critiquing the author, and I found this super helpful for making sure that I'm actually including critical analysis and I'm not just summarizing what the author wrote.
that's so hard. Yesterday, I was living at my parents' house. I blinked and things changed. Fast forward, and I was moving out. I can.